We are altcoin miners, so we don't mine Bitcoin, but we mine just about every other coin besides Bitcoin. We have to go through to the next room, the bunker. We've got uh, a lot of noise in there and a lot of airflow. Mine step. Here are our primary mining rigs. Uh, we've got a mixture of some 9 card rigs and some 12 card rigs. All of these are 1080 Ti and video cards and they're all constantly changing which algorithm that they're mining depending on which one is most profitable at any given time. Uh, and here is our original mining rig. This is our test bench. A bit flashier and that's just because those particular cards happen to be cheaper at the time of purchase. On the mining rigs now, instead of having say, a motherboard with two or three PCIe lanes uh, with 16 slots on, uh, you will have a card with maybe 12 different connectors for graphics cards. Um, because graphics cards are quite large and don't all fit on the right next to each other on the board, uh, you will move them away from each other using a riser card and an extension cable. And you can see quite a lot of that going on in the back there. It looks a bit of a mess, but it is functional. And of course, if you can get them a bit farther apart, you can put a lot more air through and keep the heat down. We've got a heat wave going on in the UK. People may not know this, but for us, this is very hot at the moment. Yeah, the heat wave hasn't helped a lot. And our cooling solution that we did originally put in hasn't really covered our needs. We've actually had to start ramping the power back while we're developing a new cooling solution. Uh, it's going to be a very make-do cooling solution. We're not going to buy an off-the-shelf one. So we'll be buying car radiator fans and then using a Raspberry Pi to control the speed of those depending on the temperature. I know it's a bit of a contentious issue mining and energy, but can you talk me through that? Because I understand it's slightly different with altcoins, is that right? Um, it depends on the coin. And each coin has either one algorithm or multiple algorithms. And each of those algorithms requires a different amount of power to compute. Some of the algorithms are really heavy on GPU core. Some of them are very heavy on the memory usage. Um, the algorithms that we use all vary. Uh, so we don't really have a specific efficiency on any one of them that we can set up at the moment. Um, each of these cards is doing 250 watts of electricity in and converting the majority of that to heat. Uh, so we've got essentially a 15 kilowatt heater here in a quite a small room. So we need to just keep that air moving as much as possible. What's going on with the software? You mentioned it switches between coins. I mean, how does that happen? Is that something you buy off the shelf? Is that software you guys have written? It's something you can make yourself, but we've used an off the shelf one for that particular um, job. It hooks up to several different websites. One of them is whattomine.com. Uh, and that tells you using your efficiency of your card versus the difficulty of that particular coin at the moment, what your returns are gonna be. Uh, and it can compare all of those very, very quickly and select the right coin to mine at the time. In terms of altcoins, is there a kind of standard amount or is it waiting for the jackpot, the one golden nugget? How does it uh, work? It's exactly the same as Bitcoin, but the difficulty level is much lower. So you don't have to use ASIC uh, machines specifically for mining it. Um, some of the altcoins have got an ASIC algorithm built in and the idea there is to keep it as decentralized as possible. So if it's just ASICs, then only those people with an ASIC, a large investment in ASICs are going to be able to really contribute towards the system. Um, and if it's just GPUs, then there's still an ASIC market there that you could expand into and keep it as decentralized as possible. Um, and there's, it's to do with the ethos of the coin, whether they've decided to go fully decentralized or slightly less decentralized. If you had different graphics cards with different hardware, say like an AMD or an NVIDIA, then yes, definitely they'll be doing different coins simultaneously. But with all of these being exactly the same card, essentially, if it's most profitable for one, it'll be most profitable for all of mine. So here's your 1X risers. Those are 12 PCIe connectors. Yeah. Where you normally see them be this full size here, the 16X connector, which is what the graphics card plugs into. Yeah. And then these are the same slot, but they're only running at 1X speed. You don't need the full width of the... You don't, no, because the actual data transmission is relatively low. It's done a high, high amount of number crunching and then it returns with a very small value. Essentially, a yes or a no, I found something. And that goes back to the pool and the pool confirms whether or not that's a valid solution. I highly recommend a six-card rig for anybody's home. And any room you put a six-card rig in during the winter, you won't have to pay for heating on. The output is hot air, lots and lots of hot air. So if you can find a use for that hot air, it's no longer really being wasted. So perhaps you could turn it into a good use. Um, during the winter, and certainly during our office moves, we couldn't run these rigs at the offices. So I took one home, my colleague took one home to keep it going over. 
and my conservatory was warmed all through the winter. I didn't have to turn my space heaters on to keep that nice and toasty. So the rig paid for its own electricity, it paid a monetary reward as far as Bitcoin is concerned, and it paid for my heating so I could turn the heating off. So I certainly recommend having one at home. And as soon as it went, the wife was like, Where is it? where's that mining rig back? It's too cold in here, I need it back now. People will be used to seeing a silver back plate where you screw it into the back of the PC. It's got a mesh over it so it slows airflow and we've got nothing to screw that into in our mining rigs. So we take it off, just drops a couple of degrees off the temperature. Every little helps when it comes to getting heat out of here. People on the other side of that camera can't understand the temperature. We are planning on upgrading the cooling solution. The summer that we're having this year wasn't on our cards. So the extra 15 Celsius that the ambient temperature is now is actually causing us problems. And we've got a new set of car fans behind us that will be building into a new cooling system. So this was our first build rig. We've got a spare cabinet sitting around. We thought it'd be pretty good for airflow, as that's primarily what they're designed for. As you can see, we've whacked a few baffles in, cardboard and a bit of rock wool there. That makes a big difference to the amount of air that's being forced between the cards. The air comes in the bottom and is pulled up by this car radiator fan at the top. And when this is running, it's pretty much close to ambient temperature at all time, even with that many GPUs in. Presumably these car fans are relatively inexpensive compared That's to- That's why they're being used, because they're super cheap. Super cheap, pretty high throw throughput, easy to power. Uh, anything that's in a car has got a very similar power supply to in a PC, running only 12 volts. Should we go and uh, go somewhere quieter? Yeah, sure. <laughs> They are not the best cards for mining every coin by any stretch of the imagination, but they are probably the best cards for mining most of the coins. Um, the boards are actually mining, mining motherboards, but they would work absolutely fine as a gaming rig. 